Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show back again with a big question. And Lunchbox, I'm told, I've been receiving the smoke signals. Um, I've been receiving uh, messages tied to the foots of pigeons. Uh, but the messages are, of course, written on packagings from Juicy Fruits. It's weird, but he says he's coming back. He's coming back next week. He's going to be returning with his own big questions. But this week, it's um, my turn. Sorg, I have a question. Hmm. Is LB going to come back with a mohawk and weird Jack Sparrow facial hair? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I'll ask him that at lunch this week. Anyways, um, uh, I, you know, I got thinking about this. You know, WrestleMania, a lot of fun. You've been talking about it. Um, but there's a few moments, Matt, you can concur with this, uh, where we literally jumped out of our seat. In my mind, those few things were when Randy Orton pulled that crazy RKO out of nowhere off of the stomp. Um, there was something else that happened in between there. And, of course, when Seth Rollins came out at the end. Uh, to the point, I remember your wife, uh, Matt Carlin's, uh, uh, like, I think almost breaking her hand because uh, on the ceiling above her. Yeah. That she just <laughs> raised up so quickly. Um, so I, my question is, can you think of a time? This is kind of a remember when, I know. But when was the last time you remember raising up out of your seat in reaction to something that happened in wrestling or a time when, you know, back when or something like that. When did you raise up last? That's the short version. No. Hey, the last know? time the last time or just a time? A time could be the last time. But I mean I think that's the ultimate you know, uh, everybody saw the LL Cool J entrance video, uh, intro video, which I thought was tremendous. Like this is a, thing. this is another. This is why we watch wrestling. <laughs> this is why we're excited about WrestleMania kind of thing. Um, I, I got I actually watched that before the indie show, uh, um, not the podcast, but the show I worked uh, Saturday night, and I'm just like, dude, and I passed the Chachi. He's like, dude, you know, uh, and you know, Chachi's kind of a tough nut, nut to crack for that sometimes too. Um, but again, that vision of like, we're all in the same moment and we all just reacted at the same time to, to something. And, and that kind of shared experience is kind of what I'm going for here. Um, I don't know who's got, who's got the first one. I, I got mine. Um, two years, roughly two years ago to the day, uh, Dolph Ziggler cashing in on my birthday at raw after mania. I lost my damn mind. I took a video of the whole thing. You can just hear me screaming, holy shit, holy shit, he's doing it, holy shit. And then he almost lost, and then he eventually won. It was all the better. It was so good. Nice. Uh, but, yeah, and I brought my friend to Raw uh, who said he'd go with me because it was my birthday. He doesn't watch wrestling. He had no idea what the fuck was going on. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty great. And he loved Raw up until the point where we were stuck on a train ride for two hours home with everyone fandangling. <laughs> <laughs> Remember wow. that, guys? Wow, yeah. Yeah, well, it actually happened a little bit on the pre-show, so... I think it's kind of funny that fandangling and doing lucha lucha is the same movement. Mm -hmm. Co-op that. Anybody else who's got the next one? All right, I'll take it, Sword. I won't put anybody on the spot for this one, because I know it's kind of outside the box. No, it's okay, it's okay. I, I, I got a good memory of something like this happening to me. Um, it was WrestleMania 20... And uh, you may remember there was a triple threat match in the main event. Yep. <laughs> and um, Stevie Richards. <laughs> anyway, the point I got to set the scene for you a little bit. I was working in Savannah, Georgia, but it was around the St. Patrick's Day weekend. So my cousin from Buffalo, who doesn't watch wrestling, and my other friend who was uh, hanging around down there, who was from uh, Erie, was also down there, and he kind of watches wrestling, but doesn't really watch that much. But they were in a decent mood and we had just had fun spending St. Patrick's Day weekend in Savannah, Georgia, which is a place you should go to celebrate St. Patrick's Day in case you're looking for a place. Anyway, they were like, okay, let's go watch WrestleMania 20 at this sports bar in Savannah, Georgia. And, you know, nice, just it, basically what you want from your sports bar. You've got a nice packed room. Um, and I'm sure if you could, guys can remember this uh, triple threat match in the main event of WrestleMania 20 between the uh, Triple H, uh, Shawn Michaels, and this other guy. Sensor. And um, this other guy had been on a bit of a journey. Um, so if you're a wrestling fan of by a certain age, you had watched this certain wrestler since he was in 
WCW and coming up and kind of creeping along and being kind of like that mid-card title holder guy for a while. And then all of a sudden, he wins the Royal Rumble, and he's in the main event of WrestleMania 20, and you're like, oh, maybe he's going to win. But you have to also remember at the same time, Triple H is in full holding everybody down mode. He just beat Booker T in the most – horrifying fashion possible the year earlier so i'm just trying to set the mindset so when this certain wrestler makes triple h tap out the scene in this bar sort of run and i'm sure seen repeated in bars across the country and in living rooms everywhere was crazy and sure enough me i was off my bar stool and people are screaming at the television set for triple h to tap out like literally screaming at the tv set like 50 some odd people in the, in the back of this bar. And when he finally taps out, the bar goes crazy. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where even my cousin who knows nothing heads or tails about wrestling was like, okay, that was awesome. <laughs> I'll admit it. <laughs> um, that was like that ultimate, like just visceral, emotional wrestling moment that you have to watch for like years and years and years to just build up all that energy so mm -hmm. that when you finally get that one little thing that you wanted, it just like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I got a throwback for you. Yep. Goldberg being Hogan. Mm. Oh, that's a good one too. At the time that was such a hot moment. It was another one of those. We're sick of Hogan. We're sick of him having the belt. You know, ah, NWO is always getting over like those few, few, few moments where WCW got over on, on the NWO were so passionately hot. You I know? still can't. Yeah. That even uh, even a little bit. The Sting one, right, was such a relief. Actually, no. You know what's even bigger than that? Because we didn't know that it wasn't for the title when Roddy Piper put Hogan to sleep in their first meeting in, in WCW. Um, was was one of those as well. Like I, the Goldberg one. And I mean, I wasn't obviously watching them, but no. like, I felt like I felt like the only time where like they actually got one up on the NWL because even the Sting ones like marred in controversy. Right, 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 all, right. You know. um, great, great lead, and that's why I, I kind of roll back to Piper. Piper was the first time you saw a weakness, right? Mm -hmm. And again, kind of didn't realize until afterwards, like what this wasn't for the title. What are you talking about? <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. like we were like, we got, oh, this happened. <laughs> Holy crap. He beat him. Why doesn't he not have a title? <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that, that, that post look was, was like a lot of post WCW pay-per-views. So uh, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of sad <laughs> faces. Yeah. A lot of sad faces. Um, but anyways, anyways, but they were doing a good I thing got, at the time in general. I got a, oh yeah. 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 I got a few. Yeah, a, uh, a few, few quick ones. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go in chronological order. Um, the barbershop window incident. Mm -hmm. Oh Shawn yeah. Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Oh yeah. Of course. Um, Chris Jericho's debut. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, and CM Punk beating John Cena at Money in the Bank <laughs> for the title because you didn't know. You, you everybody assumed Cena was gonna win that because of the contract negotiations with Punk, and. It, it was amazing. And honorable mention goes to uh, Chris Jericho winning the Undisputed Championship, too. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, my, my, my secondary one was Shawn Michaels winning the first Elimination Chamber. Because that, in person, was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Uh, they also had that guy that Matt was talking about that we can't seem to remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's everybody? Uh, I, got, I got mine. Oh, oh hey, man. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Um... I, I was thinking a lot, and for some reason, I thought the most recent one was the like the two main events for uh, NXT R Evolution, the Sar Charlotte Sasha Banks and the Sami Zayn Adrian mm -hmm. Apple, just because I was so jacked for that. Uh, but two others came to mind that are a bit later. Um, the first I remember was um, the Joey Styles pipe bomb on Raw. Because mm. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I I've it was my first time ever seeing anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I was just like so shocked by it. Um, the other was the Nexus debut. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's really yeah. good. Because yeah. he was in Las yeah. Vegas for that. So unexpected, and just the way they did it was just it felt so chaotic and so like crazy. I remember um, where I was for that. 
Las Vegas. That's a, oh, yeah. that's a good one. Amy. So that's uh, so we have we have one from the chat room. Uh, Wheel saying last time I rose up was when Feel Bad clothesline Nick S. Von Taylor out of his boots, uh, which you can see at PittsburghWrestling.com later this week. Um, and and, and uh, if it if it made Wheels rise up, you know it's a good <laughs> oh, boom, oh, boom, oh, boom, hammer Wheels. <laughs> wow, wow. Wheels comes and runs over your feet. Yeah. <laughs> Wheels has said worse things about himself than any, anything we've reached here. Wheels knows it's all in love. It's Brian, all in love. Brian, Riz, oh, wait, says, Riz says Brian Pillman's gun scene. Oh, Ooh, Pillman's yeah. gun scene. Yeah. I, I'll say the – um um I, I can't say for sure that I jumped out of my seat, but when Austin stunned McMahon for the first time, yeah. I'm pretty sure I jumped I know, out of my I seat. I know the exact date of that. That was September 22nd, 1997. The only reason I know that was because – I couldn't watch Raw live that day because it was my mom's birthday and we had to go out to dinner. I went to school <laughs> the next day. Everyone was telling me about it. I'm like, I didn't get to, see, to watch Raw last night yet. I had to rewind the tape. As soon as I got home, I watched it. I'm like, oh, that was amazing. I was that was at the night. garden too. Yeah, that was that was also the night uh, with Cactus Jack coming back. Nice, oh, that was nice. a great one. Oh, trying to contain myself when I realized the ECW had, had, had invaded uh, – WWE on early in the invasion angle. Oh, I was yeah, watching the at my grand. I was watching at my grandparents' place, trying to be quiet so I don't bother them because I know they don't give a crap about wrestling. <laughs> while I was visiting, <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, it was kind of like, you know, they come in and just like, oh, okay, what are you watching? You know, <laughs> kind of <laughs> looks. And I'm just like, this is Eddie, really Eddie good. Be- Eddie beating Brock was one of those too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Eddie. I was. Yeah, I was one of my early thoughts on that one too. So. Um, all right. Uh, anyways, uh, let us know your thoughts. Hey, you know, if you uh, tweet us, what made you rise up out of your seats in pro wrestling? Um, <laughs> hashtag w- anything dirty. You're saying it's so sultry, sword. Ar- uh, Armageddon, wait. Armageddon, six woman uh, bikini pool match. Sword. Oh jeez. Oh, wait, no, I just got one I'm answer. Gonna watch. One gonna... answer. Early sunny. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say one word early, Sunny. <laughs> Maybe oh, right. Words, so much I forgot how to sunny. smell. Huh. <laughs> um, uh, but no hashtag WMS big question, and you'll actually get a copy of this week's. So we mentioned a, something that happened there, March the Victory 2015, uh, with the intergender match with uh, Mickey Knuckles and Nick Osborne Taylor. Taylor, it's a pretty tremendous match. Actually, it's a lot of fun, and uh, and Trachi put a lot of work in to get that match to look good. So there's that. Um, so please do that. And uh, we had some responses from last week's question, actually in email form. Uh, last week's question was uh, whether you know not having the belt every week on Raw really kind of hurt the product or not so often on every pay-per-view. And we did have an email question. Oh, no, I lost your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he says, uh, in my opinion, I think it does hurt the WWE product uh, due to the weakness of other titles and that let's be honest the creative team is a c plus at best <laughs> in the powers that have that be have forgot how to build talent wb is nowhere close to the mid card of the lucha undergrounds of the world anyways Derek, uh Derek Stroud. as always oh thank you Derek stroud as always your biggest fan in utah thanks guys keep up the good work he'll be receiving a copy of night of superstars three Include who's there last year? Bret Hart was there, I know. Uh, great match with AJ Styles against. Um, oh, I'm forgetting his name. Oh, Derek Stroud. No, not Derek Stroud. <laughs> not Derek Stroud. <laughs> oh, I, he's, I can see his face. He's an awesome dude. He was in TNA for a minute. What so, does he look like? And then that Stoke Monkey fell over. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> Beardy guy like from New York like Wrestling. Like uh, but no, tremendous matches there and a lot of great names and a lot of great faces there. Uh, so he'll be getting a copy of that this week. Um, like in the meantime, <laughs> hey, you guys like t-shirts, right? Sure. Sword, we love t-shirts. Matt Carlin. 